These children from Kapanga are playing on a valuable slice of real estate. It's dry as dust, but underneath the surface lies part of the world's largest coal supply. Coal is big business in Mozambique, and the tiny village of Kapanga is in the way. The goats are still grazing here, but that could change. Loria Makanjo is the village leader. Many of the villages in the region have disappeared, but Makanjo <laughs> wants to make sure hers remains. <laughs> We don't want to leave. We've seen what happens to the people who have been resettled. They were promised better houses, but that wasn't the case, and promised jobs, but they're still out of work. They were promised food because they were moved to a place with poor soil, but they only got food for the first 12 months. More than 700 families from the region were moved to Kateme, some 40 kilometers away. The main street has a few small shops, but there's no market. The farmland they gave us is too stony to plant anything. And we didn't get the fertilizer they promised us. In our old village, we could make a living by farming. Here, that's impossible. And they didn't give us jobs either. That's why we want to go back to where we came from. We don't want to stay here. Their former home is now one of the world's largest coal mines. Brazilian mining company Vale has already excavated nearly 3 million tons of coal from this mine this year alone. It plans to excavate around 2 billion tons of coal from the Moatize mine over the next 35 years. Only a small percentage of the profits enters the state coffers in Mozambique. The mining companies receive generous tax breaks from the government. The country's mineral wealth is practically being given away. Alberto Vaquina, then the provincial governor and now prime minister, says that was a necessary evil. When we were negotiating with the companies, Mozambique first had to establish a reputation as a secure investment location. And that meant making concessions, of course. If the Mozambique government suddenly changes the rules after making these compromises, that would send a very poor message. We also need investment in other sectors. If we go back on our word, what would they think? But the coal boom is transforming some areas of the region. The provincial capital of Tete has grown from a sleepy village to a regional powerhouse with more than 180,000 residents. The transformation is also visible in the city's largest market. Once the market sold mainly fruit and vegetables, these days though, all sorts of goods are sold here. George Azibu shows us his stand. Back at home in neighboring Malawi, he was unemployed. Here in Tete, business is thriving. Uh, the man I receive, I uh, use it to buy some uh, commodities there in Malawi. So my life is now changing just because I uh, afford some commodities I was lacking before. So I have just even bought some shoes uh, I didn't have, and now I have just bought them. But others are being left behind in the coal boom. Jaime Guta owns one of the two carpentry shops in Tete. He hasn't received any orders from the large coal companies. They prefer to buy what they need abroad, in larger quantities. The big companies should give us more time for production and they should be more transparent when it comes to awarding contracts. On the whole, the population and the small businesses are pleased that major projects like the coal operation have come to Tata, but we need to know how to make the best of it. What opportunities are there? What kinds of services are needed and what quality is required? For these small businesses and for Mozambique as a whole, the coal here is a major opportunity for a poor nation. But as Guta notes, the government will need to change the rules of the game to make sure that everyone can profit from the coal boom.